everyone. I'm Peter Bauer. Welcome to Pete's Lab. Today uh, we have another one of our short little lectures, vignettes if you will, on subjects related to brownfields and groundwater. Today's topic is porosity. Porosity is the percentage of open space in rock or regolith. Usually we think of rock as being completely solid, but in many cases there are fractures or cracks, uh, sometimes open spaces uh, that can provide some porosity. Regolith, on the other hand, is the loose material at the surface of the earth, uh, mud, sand, gravel, and so forth, and it is composed of particles, and those particles have spaces between them, uh, which can give you a rather large amount of open space or, as we'll see, porosity. There are some other subjects that we're going to touch upon. Uh, permeability, uh, bulk volume, bulk density, density of particles, volumes of the particles, and so forth. We'll make some measurements and we'll discuss their significance. I have here a uh, pebble of quartz. And if one were to try to determine the volume of this pebble, most people understand that if we have um, a graduated cylinder with, in this case, 110 milliliters of water, that by dropping the pebble into the water, the water level will rise, and we should be able to determine the volume of the pebble by difference. So let me drop this in here. And we can see that the water level has gone up and the new water level is 130 milliliters, meaning that the difference, 130 minus 110, 20 milliliters is the volume of the pebble. Milliliters, we should also understand, is the same volume as a little cube, one centimeter on a side, that is a cubic centimeter, or cc, is exactly the same volume as a milliliter. While most understand that one can determine the volume of a pebble by volume difference, by dropping it into a uh, graduated cylinder with uh, some liquid in it, uh, it gets a little more confusing when uh, we have more than one particle. But it's really the same uh, principle. If we were to dump all these particles, in this case uh, a uh, nice pile of uh, half-inch plastic uh, beads, uh, into a liquid, surely the volume would rise, and what would we have done? We would have measured the volume of all of these particles, not just one, but many. Here, for instance, is a beaker of sand consisting of uh, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of uh, particles. Uh, we could do the same thing by dropping the sand into a water, watching the water level rise, and determining the volume of all the particles. And that's exactly what we're going to to do. Okay, so let's uh, begin the experiment. Uh, before uh, you uh, begin uh, the experiment, you should all have uh, a copy of the handout, particles, porosity, bulk density, and particle density. If you don't have it, uh, pause the video and uh, go to the website, print it out, and then start watching the video again. So let's begin. Uh, the first thing that we'll want to do is to uh, determine the uh, weight of this beaker. Okay, the weight of the beaker is 171.3 grams, so if you would please uh, enter that uh, data on your sheet in item number two, the weight of the beaker. And the next thing we're going to do is determine the weight of the beaker plus the particles. Again, the particles are the plastic, that is styrene uh, beads, one half inch in diameter. And we're going to use a weight to assist us. Okay. 
Here we're getting close. And the weight of the beaker plus the beads is 539.8 grams. So please enter that on your sheet, 539.8. By subtracting the weight of the beaker uh, from the weight of the beaker plus the particles, we can find out the weight of the particles. And that turns out to be 366 point seven uh, grams. So we've determined uh, one thing and that is the weight of the particles. Uh, the next thing that we could do that would be fairly straightforward it would be to determine the bulk volume that is the volume of the particles plus the spaces between the particles and we can do that by putting the particles into this graduated cylinder get them level. Uh, the divisions on this uh, graduated cylinder are uh, in increments of 10 milliliters. Uh, the volume of the beads is 440 milliliters. So uh, please enter that on your sheet. And now we're going to determine the volume of the particles. I have here some uh, water that I put some dye in, and I'm going to put this into the graduated cylinder. And the volume here is 390 milliliters. And the next step, the dramatic step is to pour the beads uh, into this graduated cylinder uh, exactly as we did for the single quartz pebble before, only we're doing it uh, maybe a hundred times over. And we can see uh, that the water level has risen, of course. And we can also note that the spaces between the particles are completely filled with liquid. Uh, here, the pore space, that is the open space between the particles, is connected. And fluids, water in this case, can move freely between the particles. Uh, this is uh, an important uh, term uh, called permeability. Uh, it means simply the ability of fluids to be transmitted by rock or regolith and clearly uh, the spaces between these particles are connected and fluid moves easily between them. Uh, the new volume is 640 milliliters so if you'll enter that on your sheet and then you can see uh, by looking at your sheet that we can now determine the volume of the particles by subtracting the initial volume of the water from the final, that is 390 from 640, gives us 250 milliliters as the volume of the particles. Now since the bulk volume was the volume of the particles plus the volume of the pore space, we can also now determine the uh, amount of open space in these particles. The original bulk volume was 440 milliliters. The volume of the particles was 250. So subtracting 250 from 440 gives us 190 milliliters, which is the volume of the open space or pore space between uh, the particles. The rest of this is really some simple calculations. We can determine the porosity, that's number nine on your sheet, which is the percentage of open space. And we do that by dividing 190, uh, the uh, volume of the pore space over the total volume, the bulk volume of 440, and we get 43%. So 43% of the volume of these particles is open space. And conversely, the particles take up 57% uh, of the space. We can also now determine the density. Remember, density is the weight divided by the volume. So we could do the 
bulk density, which would be the weight, which is uh, we determined right at the beginning, 366.7 grams. Divide that by the uh, bulk volume of 440 milliliters, and we find out that the bulk density is 0.83 grams per milliliter or grams per uh, cubic centimeter. That's not particularly uh, uh, useful, but much more useful is the density of the particles themselves. If we know the density of the particles themselves, it may give us some information uh, that would be very useful in determining what the particles are made of. In this case, we divide 366.7, which is the weight of the particles, by the volume of the particles, 250 milliliters, and we find out that the density of these styrene beads is 1.47 grams per cubic centimeter, which makes sense. Uh, the density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter, and of course these beads have sunk to the bottom. Uh, if they were less dense than water, they'd float, and um, we wouldn't be able to do the experiment. Okay, so we have now shown you uh, how to measure porosity, the percentage of open space uh, in a collection of uh, particles. Uh, in this case, the uh, percentage of open space in the uh, pile of plastic beads is about 43%. Uh, we weighed uh, the uh, particles. We determined the bulk volume uh, of the particles in uh, pore space. We determined the volume of the particles, the density of the particles, and so forth. All these measurements are uh, very important uh, for studying uh, groundwater and the flow of fluids uh, through uh, regolith uh, on the surface of the earth. Um, we could have done the same experiment uh, with, this, uh, with this sand and determined uh, its uh, porosity and also the density of the particles. Permeability, uh, to remind you again, is the ability of fluids to flow through rock or regolith. In order for that to happen, of course there has to be porosity but the porosity must also be connected so that the liquid can move from one place to another. A good example of a material that has very high porosity but doesn't uh, allow fluids to move is styrofoam. You take a styrofoam cup, if you look at the walls of the styrofoam cup, you'll see that it's made of very tiny bubbles, uh, foam uh, made from styrene, and those bubbles are not connected. Uh, they're all individually uh, wrapped in plastic and of course we know the styrofoam cup uh, does not allow liquids to pass through it. Uh, there are some rocks such as pumice that has similar uh, properties, uh, very very light and airy, lots of open space but the air space uh, is not connected at all. So permeability uh, is the ability of um, fluids to move within uh, sand, let's say, uh, or even in uh, through rock where you have uh, uh, fractures. And this number of porosity we'll see later on is a very important uh, uh, piece of information uh, that we need in order to use Darcy's Law, which allows us to calculate the rate at which water flows in the subsurface. Until next time, this is Peter Bauer in Pete's Lab.